Okay, what's up my fellow award travel kings and queens? Today we're gonna to be looking at the top 10 hotel points redemptions in my opinion. So I'm not saying these are the best hotels to redeem your points at objectively, but this is my subjective list of the top 10 places to use points at to stay around the world in hotels. So starting off with number one, we're gonna be looking at the classics. So the classics, these are really the best of the best. I never said they're easy to book, but they are really kind of the best of the best. So we're only gonna have two of these here. So number one, can I even have a presentation on the top 10 hotels to redeem points at without mentioning Waldorf Astoria, Maldives, Ithafushi? So this place goes for about 2000 US dollars a night on average, could be a bit higher, could be a bit lower, but of course you can redeem Hilton points here and it's insane. Every part about the hotel is insane. Every single room has a massive pool. You have a massive living room. Even the base rooms are like partially over water, which at a lot of places in the Maldives is not true. Now to redeem points here, it's 150,000 Hilton Honors points per night, which is very, very, very expensive. We have some more pictures of the property here. And as far as I'm aware, this is the most expensive Hilton hotel on earth. So both points and cash wise, this is the most expensive place to redeem points at or just to stay at in the world. And this is really the crown jewel of hotel redemptions. I would personally put this as the number one place to use hotel points in the world. Uh, this, you know, there's other hotels that could definitely compete with this in terms of value and in terms of uh, redemption rates and stuff like that. But in terms of just the most insanely ridiculous, overly opulent hotel on earth, this is it. So let's say you want to stay here. Let's say you want to go to the Maldives. What is going to be our optimal booking strategy? And so for every hotel program that we cover in this list, we're going to cover the optimal booking strategy in my view. So for this place, right, this is a Hilton Honors Resort. So the points price is 150,000 Hilton Honors points per night. If you have any type of Hilton status, you get the fifth night free. So if you hold any Hilton credit card, because even the base level Hilton credit cards in the United States grant you Hilton silver status, if you hold any Hilton status, you get fifth nights free on points. So this effectively brings our cost down to 120,000 Hilton Honors points per night. Crucially, this hotel is also bookable with Hilton free night certificates. This is awesome because even though this is an extremely expensive hotel, even on points, using the certificates, it's not any more expensive, right? Because if you use a certificate for the cheapest or most expensive hotel, it's used up either way. So that is really, really great to use certificates here. That is the big brain move. So... In terms of combining certificates with the fifth night free benefit, you can't do it sadly. So if you have like three nights on points and then a fourth night as a certificate, no, you don't get the fifth night free. If you do have four nights on points, you get the fifth free then, and then you can combine that with a certificate to be the sixth, seventh, or eight night, for example, that works fine. But to actually get fifth night free, it does need to be five consecutive nights booked, and then four of those nights will be charged directly in points. So moving on, so there's two kind of main ways to book this. So I kind of talked about the basics of the certificates and the points, but if you actually want to book it, there's the cash method. And so that's one method here. So the idea being Hilton sells their points very, very frequently at half a cent each. So the max purchase for this is 320,000 points. So Hilton artificially caps this. They don't let you buy more than 320,000 a year after the bonus usually. Now what's cool though, is you can freely transfer between accounts. So let's say you have a player two, three, or four, and they have not reached their cap of buying points yet. They can buy points in their account and then transfer over to yours. No problem. Works easily. So this brings our effective cost at 120,000 points a night, assuming fifth night free, multiplied by half a cent per point, $600 a night. So still a very, very expensive cash price to pay. But considering if you were just booking the hotel directly, you're paying over 2,000 a night to be able to get it by buying points for 600 is very nice. That's, you know, that's in a range that a lot of people actually could somewhat afford compared to 2000 where you would need to be ultra, ultra, ultra wealthy. So the other method is the card method. So this is the more typical award traveler type method. So the idea being here is there's a, a card called the Hilton Aspire credit card. It has a $450 annual fee. Now, as part of the signup bonus for the card, you get 150,000 Hilton Honors, or sorry, yeah, Hilton Honors points. So that would be equivalent to write about one night here if you're booking a single night at a time. Additionally with the card, so to offset the $450, you get a $250 resort credit. And so the cool thing about this resort credit is it's super, super easy to use. So as long as you charge anything at the property to your credit card, and assuming it's like via your room bill, 
it will be reimbursed, assuming you're staying at a Hilton Resort. So if you're staying at a Hilton Resort, you charge anything to your room, pay it off with a card, it will work. There's no like restrictions like, oh, it doesn't work toward taxes and fees or tips or whatever. No, it works for like literally anything. And of course, we can use this at the Waldorf Astoria Maldives. And so that helps us offset our trip cost even more. Additionally, there's a $250 airline fee credit. Now, technically, this is only supposed to be used for airline incidentals. But to be honest, you can use it for a lot more if you know what you're doing. So just do some Googling on that. I can't talk about it too publicly. Now, the main proposition here is the one free night certificate that you get every single card member here. So these free night certificates can be used anywhere in the world at any Hilton property, including the Waldorf Astoria Maldives. And what makes it so powerful is that you can hold multiple Hilton Aspire cards. So if you hold one card, it's like, okay, it's decent, it's cool or whatever. But if you have multiple cards, that means you can have, you know, five, six, seven cards, meaning you can book five, six, seven nights at the Waldorf Astoria Maldives because, you know, booking one night, what would be the point in that? And so it's a really, really, really powerful card. I have two of them now. I'm going to try to get three or four by the end of the year. I'm going to try to have my player two get some more, but it's a super, super nice card. Now, so what's the catch though? The best of the best is also the hardest of the hard to book. So if you really look close in, we'll see May 2023, pretty good availability, pretty wide open, pretty easy to book. Uh, this is taken from MaxMyPoint.com, by the way, we'll talk about it in a second, but an amazing resource. If we look far out though, it is bone dry. There's really nothing. So if you're wanting to book something far out, if you're wanting to book, you know, a trip in advance to the Waldorf Astoria Maldives, you're going to either really need to be booking as soon as the schedule opens, as soon as the room opens, and even then it's very difficult, or you're going to want to be checking meticulously and setting alerts for these type of hotels using a resource like MaxMyPoint.com. And so when you have these award alerts, you'll get an email when the space opens up and then you can immediately book it. And because it does get taken very, very, very quickly. So you are going to want to be on top of that if you want to book something like this. And yeah, the dates with the blue means it's bookable. So we'll talk more about like how to find these hard awards in a second. But number two, classic number two is the Lila Ventana Big Sur. So Lila Ventana is an all-inclusive resort. It's one of the best hotels in North America. It's definitely Hyatt's best hotel within North America. So the cash price here is $1,500 to $2,000 a night. Uh, typically the, the points price here, it's category eight. So it ranges from 35,000 to 45,000 world Hyatt points per night. Typically, realistically, you're looking at 40 to 45,000 a night. Now I've been here, amazing hotel. They're dog friendly. Uh, they're very, very generous with the global upgrades. So it's an awesome hotel. It's bookable, you know, for 40,000 points a night typically. And I wouldn't book a suite here. I would book only a standard room. The suites are cool and whatever, but you have a pretty decent chance of getting upgraded to the one with global status. If you book a standard room, it's so much cheaper. So just book the standard room. It's not worth it to book a suite. Uh, and so, yeah, it's a category eight hotel. Uh, this chart's taken from one mile at a time, by the way. Let's see, yeah, we'll see it ranges, you know, this is their whole category chart. Now, Hyatt has a separate category chart for all-inclusive resorts. Now, the Alila, despite being an all-inclusive resort, is not part of the all-inclusive award chart. That's because the all-inclusive award chart applies to brands which are all-inclusive. The Alila brand typically is not all-inclusive. That's why the Lila Ventana is not subject to the all-inclusive award chart, subject to the standard award chart, which has cheaper pricing. So that is great for us. So the optimal booking strategy here, 40,000 points a night on average, usually. You can earn points with Chase very, very, very easily using the Chase Inc. cards. So the sign-up bonus on each of these is 75,000 to 90,000 points if you're getting it at the all-time highs. So that is really great because you can transfer points over to Hyatt at a rate of one-to-one. -one. So every card sign up, it, you know, is one to two Ventana nights. So really great way to earn Hyatt points. That is going to be definitely the main way to earn them. And then of course, to transfer the Chase points over to Hyatt, you will need to hold either the Sapphire Preferred, Sapphire Reserve, or Chase Inc. Preferred. One of those three cards, and then you'll have the ability to transfer points over to Hyatt. You can also buy Hyatt points at 1.8 cents each. You can actually buy them cheaper sometimes, but let's just say 1.8 cents to be conservative here. There's a there's a fee every year of the amount you can buy of 55000 now, but you can transfer freely between accounts. So even if you reach your cap, your player two, three, four, five, twenty-seven can transfer some points into your account after buying them. So that you can use that as a nice way to combine points for a redemption. If you're buying points at 1.8 cents each, which again, keep in mind you can actually buy them cheaper sometimes, it's about 720 bucks a night. Very expensive hotel night, no doubt, you know, still very pricey, but compared to the cash prices of Ventana is a relative bargain. So yeah, it's awesome. But Again, with Ventana, very difficult to find award availability. You're really going to want to be looking close in or as far out as the schedule opens. Other than that, you'd need to be pretty flexible. But the cool thing is we have some tools to help us on these super hard, you know, classic award redemptions. So the three tools I recommend are MaxMyPoint.com, 
staywithpoints.com and aways.com. There'll be links in the description for all three of these. Some of them may be affiliate links, but so the one I personally use the most is maxmypoint.com. I just really like their calendar search feature. It just makes it very easy to parse dates. Uh, all three of, the, of them have their unique abilities. So they all let you set alerts on award availability for the hotels that you want. Uh, each of them has their like, you know, kind of different ways of doing that. Uh, and aways.com is the most all-in-one tool because you can just search any place in the world and it will show you all the points bookable hotels from the major four chains. So Hyatt, Hilton, Marriott, IHG. And that will be a great way to, if you're kind of a beginner to this and you just want to search where you want to go and see what hotels you can book on points, aways.com is a great all-in-one tool for that. So let's move on to the set type number two, if I could get this presentation to move. Okay, so these are the easier classics. These are spectacular and attainable. So property number three on our list, Grand Willega Maui. This is a Waldorf Astoria property, so under the Hilton umbrella. Now, we're not going to talk about the same thing that we did with the Waldorf Maldives. Right? We already covered how to buy the points and what the rate to do that and all that is. So the math is exactly the same here. The strategy is exactly the same. This is just a different price. So the, the price here is $1,000 a night cash or about $1,100 or eleven. Sorry, 110,000 Hilton Honors points per night. So if you're buying those points on sale, counting for fifth night free, you're actually able to book this for under $500 a night. And what's so cool about it right now is there seems to be wide open award availability. So at least as of time recording, for summer, peak season, super easy award availability, and it means you can just buy points and stay here for less than half price. Amazing, amazing, amazing redemption. Uh, I've visited this place. I haven't actually stayed here, but it looks like a beautiful property and they are in the process of renovating it too. So yeah, this is a great place if you want to go to Maui. Uh, number four, we have two properties. So these are uh, Park Hyatt uh, Maldives on the left and Alila Maldives on the right. So Park Hyatt Hadaha and Alila Kotharu. And so the Park Hyatt's the older property. The Alila is brand new, just got built last year, but both amazing properties, $1,000 night cash price. 30,000 World Hyatt points a night. Typically, these are Category 7, so they range from 25,000 World Hyatt points per night to 35,000 World Hyatt points per night, but typical nights, 30,000 points. And what's nice about this is it's super easy to book. It, it There's wide open availability. Uh, there's, you know, even during like New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, New Year's Day, all those, all those type of, you know, holidays, Typically, there seems to be pretty easy availability, and it, so that's an amazing, amazing redemption. It's it's not hard to book, and you know you can use the math from earlier to buy World Hyatt points, and you can stay here for you know less than half price. About and so it's it's a really good redemption. I think a lot of people, um, you know, I, I don't really understand why anyone pays cash here to be honest, because it's so easy to book on points, and it's so easy to just buy those points. So if you want to go to the Maldives, these are two very, very attainable properties, and still ultra, ultra, ultra luxury. So five. Yeah, I messed this one up. This one's not the Park Hyatt New York, even though it says Park Hyatt New York. This is the Park Hyatt Sydney you're seeing pictures of. I just thought it was a bit more of an interesting redemption. And what's so cool about this is some of the rooms have Sydney Opera House views. Now, not the base rooms, but some of the rooms, assuming you have global status, decent chance of getting upgraded. And yeah, it, it, how look at this. You have views of the Sydney Opera House. Like, that's amazing. And so this is, I think, the best hotel in Sydney, Australia. I haven't been to Sydney, Australia, but I'm going to assume it is. Someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, not as an amazing of a cents per point redemption as some of the other ones we've looked at, but more than two cents a point, super aspirational property, uh, and it is pretty easy to book. The availability does appear to be pretty wide open, so this isn't a hard place to book at all. Now, we're going to move on to a new section. This is the most interesting section, the hidden gems. So don't worry, guys, not every one of these hotels is mentioned in every single Point Sky article. So at number six is a personal favorite of mine. I need to book this place. I, I hope they don't change the award rates. This is the Kempton Seafire Grand Cayman. So the cash price here is about $1,200 a night, very conservatively after tax. Usually it's actually a lot more, like $1,500, $1,600 a night, assuming you're going during peak season from December to April because that's the dry season. Now the points price is only 70,000 IHG points per night. Now this is arguably, from what I understand, the best hotel on Grand Cayman. It even beats the Ritz-Carlton. And so it's such an expensive cash price. Why is it such a good redemption though? So for, we'll look at the math here right now. So 70,000 IHG points per night. If you have the Chase IHG Premier or IHG Premier business credit card, you get the fourth night free on consecutive award night bookings. So you book four nights back-to-back -back award nights and you have the, those cards, you'll not have to pay for the fourth night. So very, it already brings their cost down by 25%. If you open either of these cards, your sign-up offers are going to typically be about 140,000 points each. It does depend a little bit on when you sign up. Sometimes they actually can be a bit higher than that. But base rate, usually you're getting about 140,000 IHG points per card sign up for the Premier and the Premier Business. And yes, you can have both. Now, with this fourth night free, it brings their cost down to 52,500 ISG points per night. This is insane because 
you can buy IHG points on sale for half a cent a piece, and they have sales very, very frequently. You can also buy an uncapped amount of points at 0.6 cents each. So typically when you buy points in a program, there's like a limit each year of how many you can buy, but you can actually buy unlimited points at 0.6 cents a piece. So the way you do that is you go search IHG points plus cash booking. So assuming you have some IHG points in the account already, you gotta do the math on your own to make sure they haven't changed this or anything. But usually when you do the points plus cash booking, how it works is you don't have enough points for the full redemption, but you pay a cash copay. But then when you refund the reservation, they do not give you the cash copay back, but they give you the total amount of points it takes to book that hotel for the night. And so if you do the math on it, usually it's about 0.6 cents each, meaning you can buy an uncapped amount of IHG points for 0.6 cents each. So if you're combining that with fourth night free, that means you can stay here for $263 to $315 a night just by buying the points. And $315 a night is the rate buying them uncapped. So that is absolutely amazing. You're staying here, you know, for like a third of the cost. Now you do have to pay the $80 a night resort fee as well. So that does eat in, you know, to your margins a bit there, but still, this is a absolutely phenomenal redemption. I really hope they don't change this. This is probably one of the best, if not the best IHG redemptions in the world right now. So moving on to number seven, these are Hyatt's in Bali. So we have four properties here. So on the left, we see a Lila Ubud. This is a category two Hyatt, 8,000 world Hyatt points per night, about 200 bucks cash. And so this is in the jungles of Bali, like up more kind of in the central part of Bali-ish. And so beautiful property. I have it booked for later this year. Looks absolutely stunning. And it's a very, very good redemption. In the cash rates, I'm being actually a bit conservative here. So you're getting some very, very good cents per point value. On the right, we have Hyatt's, probably Hyatt's best category one in Bali. So it's only 5,000 points a night. Alila Mangus in East Bali. So this isn't as touristy as some of the other hotels you'll find in Bali. This is more kind of like raw Bali, if that makes sense. And other, you know, another great redemption. You'll see about 100 to 150 bucks a night and only 5,000 world of high points per night. Two other properties, the Regency Bali. This just went from a category one to category two. So it's now 8,000 points a night. Still a good redemption, not as good, but still a very, very solid redemption. Uh, and especially if you have Globalist and getting club lounge access and all that, this is a, a solid redemption for sure. And Hyatt's most aspirational Bali redemption, in my opinion, is the Alila Uluwatu. So it's a category seven, $900 a night cash, 30,000 world high points per night. You book into your base room is a one bedroom pool villa, 3,000 square feet, a 3,000 square foot villa with an outdoor private pool, which is a very large pool too. Amazing redemption, amazing hotel. You're not going to get upgraded here even as a globalist because the next category of rooms is a two bedroom, 10,000 square foot pool villa. So yeah, that's not going to happen, but don't complain. You're booking into a 3,000 square foot villa with a private pool as your base room. So amazing redemption. I have it booked for the later this year and I'm very, very excited. So this is, yeah, um, Hyatt's and Bali are just so good. And of course we already did the math on the Hyatt points and you know how to buy them in that, but amazing, amazing redemption. So number eight, oh, this is amazing. These are awesome. So this isn't a hotel per se, but when you book a vacation rental, okay. So if is a vacation rental company, okay. So let me preface it with that. When you book a vacation rental, you'll typically see a fairly reasonable base rate per night, but then you're going to get hit with all these BS taxes and fees, right? Cleaning fee, breathing fee, existing fee, earthquake fee, whatever, right? So you're going to get hit with all these stupid fees that make your cost almost double. So that's the typical problem with Vacasa vacation rentals or just any vacation rentals, right? Airbnbs, Verbos, whatever. Uh, this is just an image I pulled from a Vacasa rental in, in Hawaii. Now, bear with me for a second because here's where it gets interesting. So Vacasa has a partnership with Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. Now, Wyndham is the dumpy hotel chain that owns things like Days Inn and Ramada and La Quinta. Who, who wants to stay there? I don't want to stay there. I'm not staying there. But the points are still super valuable because for 15,000 Wyndham points per night per bedroom, you can book a Vacasa vacation rental. So if it's a one-bedroom Vacasa vacation rental, I can book it via their partnership for 15,000 Wyndham points per night. You have to call in to a dedicated phone number to book this, but it's pretty easy. They're actually pretty competent agents. So, so 15,000 points per night per bedroom. And the best part is you don't pay any taxes or fees. So it's just the 15,000 points. You're not paying the stupid cleaning fee. You're not paying any of that, just the points. So why is this? So, okay, I give you the points price, but here's where the math gets more interesting. So if you have the Barclays Wyndham business earner card, one of the best credit cards on the planet, I don't have a referral link for it. I, I legitimately just think it's an amazing card. I'm not just trying to get commissions on it. Amazing, amazing card you get a 10% discount on all Wyndham points redemptions. So that brings our cost now to 13,500 Wyndham points per night. Now, the welcome offer on this card ranges from 45,000 to 75,000 points per night. 
that's fine. You know, that's a, that's a decent offer, but that's not where the real math comes into play. So one side note I got to say real quick is there's a theoretical price cap of $325 a night base rate for these redemptions. So if you're redeeming a 15,000 Wyndham points for a one bedroom Vacasa vacation rental, theoretically the base rate of that vacation rental. So ignore taxes and fees. That doesn't matter. The base rate's not supposed to be above 325, maybe 350 a night per bedroom that you're redeeming for. So the reason, you know, that could be an issue is if the base rate's 400, it's probably not going to be bookable. They're going to say it has like blackout dates, but if it's below 325, it should be bookable. And you can always call up the phone number first, the, the Vacasa Wyndham partnership phone number to ask, and they'll be able to tell you if it's points bookable before you decide to get the points in your account or whatever. Now, Wyndham points sell frequently for 0.93 cents each, not 9.3 cents, 0.93 cents. So that is an insane, insane rate that they sell them at. And they do this very, very frequently. So if you have the Barclays business card and you buy the points on sale, that means for a one bedroom Vacasa vacation rental, you can stay for $126 a night all in. I dare you to find a vacation rental that is bookable for $126 a night base rate. It's You're not going to find it, right? So this is an amazing, amazing redemption. And this works per bedroom as well. So like you could book, you know, two bedroom Vacasa vacation rentals for double the price or three bedrooms for triple the price. Now, I haven't done that myself personally, but you can definitely do it. And Wyndham points do have a cap typically every year. You can only buy 60,000 of them. However, they do have sales and bonuses that could actually double it or even more than double it of how many points you could buy. I just bought the maximum number of Wyndham points on the most recent sale. And I'm now going to be going to Waikiki. And instead of paying $3,000 for an eight night stay, I'm paying something about a thousand bucks. And even if you don't have the business card, you can still buy these points and stay in a Vacasa vacation rental for effectively $155 per night. So still an amazing redemption. So many people don't know about this. They're paying cash for these rent vacation rentals. And I don't know why they're doing it because it's so easy to just book them on points and buy the points instead. So this is a really smart strategy. Uh, one warning is that Wyndham points do expire four years after you earn them. So just a heads up there, but are you really not going to travel in four years? I, I don't think so. So I, I think they're amazing points to buy. Uh, they're one of the only points currencies that it could arguably make sense to buy speculatively. I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying of the points currencies on the market, it's one of them, one of the better ones for sure that you could buy. Number nine, uh, going back to Hyatt, this is a more standard average redemption. This is not a super aspirational place. This is the Hyatt Regency Grand Cypress in Orlando. It's right near Disney World. And so if you're going during off season, it's not that good of a redemption. You know, the cash rates will be about like 150, 180 bucks a night. It's fine, but it's nothing amazing. Uh, no, it's actually a bad redemption if you go during off season, sorry. But if you go during peak season, like uh, winter break, spring break, times like that, when everyone wants to go to Disney World, then the cash rates climb to like 450 a night or something. And for a standard night, you can book it for 15,000 World Hyatt points on average. That's an insane redemption. That's like three cents plus per point. And so if you want to go to Disney World, this is an amazing way to save money. And of course, you could apply the earlier math of buying high end points and that stuff. But so if you want to go to Disney World, this is a great property to redeem at, assuming you're going during peak season. If you're not going during peak season, if you're going during off season, probably makes more sense to pay cash here. Number 10, this is one that no one's really talked about. This is the region Hong Kong. So this is another IHG points redemption. So this is very interesting because this used to be the intercontinental Hong Kong. And then during COVID, they had shut it down. IHG fully renovated it. It just opened back up and it is points bookable for about 90,000 ish IHG points per night, depending on when you're going. The cash price sits at around 800 bucks a night. Again, it does depend on the season. It's fairly difficult to book on points, but this is so cool because not only is this just a beautiful hotel, this is arguably the best points bookable hotel in all of Hong Kong. And because the reason it's so good, you're right on the harbor. So all the other hotels in Hong Kong, oops, all the all the other points hotels in Hong Kong typically like are set back from the harbor a bit. Even the ones that are like right on the harbor, there's still like a street in front of you. This one is right on the edge of the harbor. You're going to have breathtaking, amazing views if you get a harbor view room. Uh, this is a phenomenal location, fully renovated, probably the best points bookable hotel in Hong Kong. The only ones that compete are the St. Regis and the Ritz-Carlton, but those aren't good redemption values or not nearly as good a redemption values as this place. And so this is an amazing hotel. I have it booked for later this year. I'm very, very excited. And yeah, I, I would probably recommend staying here. I haven't, of course, stayed there yet, but it looks to be an amazing redemption. So that's everything we've got or I've got. This is all the top 10 hotels on my list. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you may notice I didn't put any Marriott redemptions on this list. And the reason why is Marriott doesn't seem to have any hotel program superpowers. 
So for example, Hyatt has the superpower of being able to transfer the points over from Chase so you can earn the points very easily, and they have great status recognition. IHG sells those points for dirt cheap so you can buy them and basically almost never lose money. So it's a very, very easy way to accumulate them and get significantly discounted stays. Uh, Hilton, the points suck, but the Aspire card is so good, you can just get multiple Aspire cards, get those resort credits, get those free night certificates, and have insane amount of discounted Hilton stays. Wyndham is good, mainly for the Vacasa partnership. The credit card is very, very good too, but the Vacasa partnership is just so overpowered. Marriott doesn't really have any of those things. The status isn't that well recognized because the top tier properties like Ritz Carlton and Addition, you're, you know, not getting free breakfast. And the points are very expensive to buy at 0.86 cents ish usually. And so it doesn't really make sense to buy the points most of the time unless it's for super aspirational top tier places. And so there's not really any superpowers other than the number of properties. It's not that great. The status is, you know, fairly good. It's probably the second most powerful status of the major hotel programs, assuming, you know, you have titanium or ambassador. But other than that, it doesn't really have any superpowers. So it's not really my favorite program. And it's, I didn't really, you know, feel the need to put any of their redemptions on this list. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please check the links in the description for a free award travel discord server. So I run a free group. We got about 1,250 people by now that are all super into award travel. We got some really smart people that are dropping deal alerts, award alerts, all these type of things. It's completely free. I don't even sell a subscription. So it's, it's a really, really great resource. If you want to apply for a credit card that I talked about today or just any credit card at all, please check out the links in the video description as well because it really, really helps support the channel. If you want to help support the Discord, that's the best way to do it. It helps me out so much. Uh, just make sure that if you do it, that the sign-up offers are competitive. You should always make sure that you're getting the best offers possible. So again, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.